So we now have episode 6 of The Walking Dead World Beyond Season 2. This episode is called Who Are You? And it's going to be a full spoiler review for the episode. So if you haven't seen the episode yet and you don't want to get anything more for you, do not listen to this review. You've been warned. So I'm happy to say this is one of the best episodes they've done this entire series. Episode 5 was an episode for me that I thought started off pretty bad. It started off very generic. Just like the rest of the episodes where it's just kind of boring at the start. But the way episode 5 ended, I actually really enjoyed it. Episode 6 was different. I actually really enjoyed it. First off, it starts off with you see uh, Dr. Leo Bennett running through the forest. And I'm thinking, oh, so they left anyways. They probably went there and... Silas wasn't there so they just ran but no it's actually a flashback to when Dr. Leo Bennett and his girlfriend who for the life of me I don't know her name when they first got their proper full-on introduction to each other when they were out kind of kind of look studying the walkers and everything so we got a flashback to seeing what the researchers was like we also find out that the CRM didn't send the walkers in there to kill the people the CRM killed everyone in these communities with some chemical weapon they created and they only put the walkers in there to make it look like they were killed by walkers rather than the chemical they sent in. So it was pretty, it was a real 180 because I was kind of expecting it to have them actually kill them with the bullets like we saw at the end of episode 1 and then they put the walkers in there but no I was quite surprised that they actually killed them with this nuclear weapon but now that I'm thinking back from episode 1, at the end of that, I don't think they were wearing any masks or protection, so I don't know if it's a case of they only thought of this nuclear weapon or this chemical weapon in this season and they didn't have the plan back in season 2. I don't really know, but just top of my head, I don't remember any masks or anything like that. But our group has decided to scrap their plans of leaving the, the uh, CRM. They think they can do more damage from within, so they send a letter back to uh, Elton and all them and letter in the, in the letter. Iris says uh, we are going to burn this place to the ground and it's just really again I always hate actually how much I talk about it but I hate Iris so much but we do get to see Hook and Jadis and it's a reuniting scene for them they actually they've known each other Hook was actually the person who trained Jadis so they have a really good strong bond even Jadis says in this episode that Hook was her mentor so they've known each other for six years that's how long Jadis has said she's been with the CRM and they've been close friends ever since even Hook says like talk to Jadis she says her name is Jadis so at first I was thinking oh so is her name actually Jadis and Anne was a fake name but then she said when the apocalypse was born she like even later on in the episode she says when the apocalypse was kind of started Jadis was born for her and I wonder if Anne was her real name or if Anne was just another fake name which she used when she joined Rick in the group just to kind of kind of kind of live with them just I didn't know I don't really know. I can't imagine that's her real name. I imagine Rick will say Anne. And she'll be like, well, that's not my name. But we do actually kind of skip on to the end. Towards the end, we do see Huck and Jade is talking. She's talking about... Jade is talking about her life before the CRM. She explains why she had the whole special dialogue, special way of talking. The junkyard people had. She said, if you give that, it gives them a sense of community. It gives them a sense of like belonging if they have to speak the way they speak. But she also says that... The way she got into the CRM was giving them something very valuable. We know the reason she got into the CRM was giving them Rick Grimes. What makes Rick Grimes so valuable that she says very valuable? I really don't know what makes him so special to the CRM that she's saying it's very valuable. It's been six years as well, so there must be a reason why he's extremely valuable unless he's a very high up member of the CRM and that's why he's never gone back is just because he really believes in the cause but I I really really don't know but uh, again as I said yeah, Iris and Percy they send a the letter back you see them sneaking around the CRM Dr. Bennett then realises that his girlfriend was the one who created the chemical so he wants to try and get the information out of her to see if he can trust her or whatever is going to go about they see um, the small group that Elton is staying at Elton has told them what's happening what the letter says and it's a 50-50 split some of them are like we should tell the CRM about this they are, are 
they are our partners we want to keep a good relationship with them and then others like why would we want to keep a good relationship with them if these people succeed and actually destroy the crm that works out in our favor and i think we should do that so it's really split down the middle at first i thought the crm was going to find out about our group because of this community but now i really i don't know how it's going to play out you do spend a lot of time with felix in this episode and felix i, I think i've said it every every review now i think felix in season one was a character i really liked but in season two he's an extremely unlikable asshole who's extremely cocky and like he's just so unlikable i can't stand the guy anymore but uh hook and him have a plan where he's gonna this uh yeah, he's going to destroy the uh, power circuits to the building. And she's going to go in. But he says, no, no, why would I trust you? So he goes in and she goes and destroys the power. But he's not doesn't know what he's looking for. He's looking around the room. He finds a few things. But for the majority of the things he finds, I feel like she could have done a better job. If he just put his ego aside, I feel like they could have got more information out there. But Hook does go. She does break all the circuit breakers he's in the room he finds some like frozen walkers some vials he finds a room full of all the chemicals that the crm used to just to defeat the uh to destroy all those communities so i wonder why they still have so much of this if their plan is to use it on someone else or if they just manufacture too much but why felix is out in kind of doing what he's doing iris hope Dr. Bennett and the girlfriend, they're all sitting down, they're having a dinner, and Iris is just going at the girlfriend, saying, she's she's talking about before the apocalypse, how they were testing on uh, rats to, to, for the greater good, and you can tell she's comparing that, not the doctor, but Iris, she's kind of, in a way, she's talking about the way the CRM is actually testing on actual people, and the doctor is kind of, I think in her back of her mind, she's implying the same way, but Iris is getting very annoyed at her, and it's just another reason why I just cannot stand Iris, because she's a bitch, she's straight up a bitch and a terrible character, but Felix does end up getting locked inside that room, and you see him starting to freeze up, Huck does eventually come and save him after a good half an hour, but he is freezing his ass off in that room, we do also get to see the girlfriend to Dr. Bennett, who I really, really got to learn her name, but she reveals her kind of backstory to him. She reveals that her daughter, who was six years old at the time, got bit, and then the father, while the daughter was dying in bed, was lying beside her, sleeping with her, and then the daughter, while she came back to life as a zombie, ate the father, and then she just locked them both in a room, and then she was, after a while, she strapped them up against a wall, or a table, or a chair, or something, and she was she got her medical bag and she done every single thing she could to try and bring them back or something. She tried so much medical on them to try and bring them back. So these are like her first test subjects. So even she says to Dr. Bennett, she goes, I couldn't save them, but God damn it, I really want to help save the world. So you can tell her intentions are good. They're not like dark. Even Hope says it later on in the episode. Not everyone in the CRM is evil. Some of the people are great. Some like the students, the teachers. Not everyone is evil, but Hope just, or Irish just looks at them as everyone here is evil. Everyone here needs to be killed, except for her dad, who is also doing the exact same thing as her dad's girlfriend. So you could say, I definitely more agree with Hope, who's looking at it as if it's not all black and, black and white, but Irish is definitely CRM bad, everyone else good, and it's just another reason not to like Iris. But uh, Will is making his way to the CRM, he's going to try sneak in and try and help them out. And he goes there with the leader's son, the leader of that community's son. They're making their way there, the son is giving Will a gun so he can uh, help defend himself from there. The son's getting ready to go back, and all of a sudden blood splatters all over Will's face. The kid has been shot to death in the face by the CRM soldiers. Will falls to the ground. He picks up the gun and he sprints out of there. Not only can Will not be captured by the CRM because it's bad to be captured by the CRM, but also the CRM thinks he's dead. So if he gets captured, that's not going to be good for him or any of the other people within the CRM. But most importantly, that kid's been dead. Once the leader finds out that kid's dead and he's been killed by the CRM, I imagine that community is going to be 100% on board with killing the CRM. They're going to be on board and joining up with the CRM to help take it down. How, uh, not joining the CRM, but to helping Iris and the group to take down the CRM. Really excited for it. All the Jada stuff I liked. We didn't get a lot of it, but it's just really, really good to see a Walking Dead character again. To see a Walking Dead character who doesn't mention rick i would love it if she kind of spoke a bit about rick but i wonder like we got three 
do we have three episodes? No, we have four episodes left. I wonder if I doubt, I a thousand percent doubt we're going to see Rick Grimes. But I hope we get to see stuff that heavily implies Rick Grimes. Or even just mention his name. I want to hear the name Rick mentioned. Because we haven't heard his name mentioned since season nine when he left. For some reason in The Walking Dead, they're terrified of mentioning the words Rick. I don't know why they're so afraid, but hopefully... They kind of get over that fear and they start mentioning his name again. Because Rick is my favourite fictional character of all time. I love Rick Grimes and I can't wait to see him again. So hopefully the next couple of episodes do not disappoint. And we get some Rick Grimes set up. And then we can finally get those Rick Grimes movies. But if you want to my thoughts on the final couple of episodes of World Beyond. Click that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.